AstroJS Rigid version 1 and it looks like one of those frameworks that are here to stay. We are entering a new era where multi-page applications are having a comeback and they are slowly replacing single-page apps in the front-end world. Furthermore, we are shifting towards an HTML-first mindset and it looks like newly introduced concepts such as the island's architecture are performing way better than the previous hydration strategies. Astro comes back with powerful features and, in the next 10 minutes, we'll look at the interesting architectural decisions behind the framework and we'll use its core features to build a small full-stack application. Without further ado, we'll jump right into it. We'll make sure we are on an up-to-date node version and then simply run the npm create astro command in the terminal. We'll then go through a very intuitive wizard and we'll make some decisions such as selecting a project template and enabling TypeScript. I know that choosing TypeScript is still considered a controversial decision for some devs, but for me, the benefits it brings in a larger project are just undeniable. Once the setup is ready, we'll get a small app running on port 3000 and the project structure more than familiar. We'll write most of our code in the source folder, where we'll be able to split our UI in components, layouts and pages. Other than that, any public asset will be stored in the public directory, and I'm also briefly mentioning the astro config file we'll discuss in detail a bit later. Let's start by looking at the layout.astro file. Even though layouts are still components, we are making a conceptual difference here, since this approach will allow us to have a unified structure for all the pages in our app. You will see in a second how layouts are integrated with the rest of the code based on the slot placeholder defined here. For now, we'll simply create a basic app header and app footer to showcase the concept. In real-world scenarios, of course, your headers will grow in complexity, you'll need to do conditional rendering based on an authentication status, offer search inputs, and more. I'll briefly touch on the styling topic here, just to clarify the situation. In Astro files, you can add styling text to define styling rules, which will be automatically scoped to the current component using the where pseudo class function. As expected, such support is also offered pretty much out of the box. Since I'm mentioning components, you probably noticed that Astro is using single file components. This is not a new concept and it was made popular by libraries such as Vue. I know that some people struggle with the separation of concerns issue here, but all in all, there are pros and cons to any decision you'll make regarding structuring your code. Back in the index.estro file, I'm importing the layout component and using it in the template area. Anything defined between the layout tags will replace the slot tag I mentioned earlier. At its core, Astro is a static site generator, but all apps need some sort of interactivity. This is provided by the framework on demand using the islands architecture. I discussed this approach in one of my previous videos. In short, you have the option to define islands of interactivity on your static HTML page. Astro will serve the HTML to the client for First, and then, in a subsequent step, attach interactivity only on the parts of the page you clearly defined as interactive. Astro relies on other UI libraries to accomplish this and I just added SolidJS in our project. What really blows my mind is the simplicity with which you can work with one or more UI libraries. Astro supports quite a few official integrations and having a micro front-end architecture doesn't sound as complicated as it used to all of a sudden. Back to our project, I'm creating a start button solid component, which will be conditionally rendered based on the user authentication status. Solid is an extremely powerful yet annoyingly simple UI library built by some pretty smart people. It is not a topic of this video, but you can find a 10 minute overview of it in the top right corner. Of interest though is how you can specify the islands of interactivity in your app. Back in the index astro file, when the start button component is added in a template area, we'll use the client directive to mention that this component is interactive. You have various options here and you can decide to only render the code in the browser or both on the server and in the browser at a specific time. Taking a little styling detour, you can use the isGlobal directive to define rules that are unscoped and that will affect your entire application. While scoping ensures code reusability and predictive behavior, defining some general rules is pretty much a basic scenario. Astro is considered a backend framework and, at its core, is aimed to render content on the server and serve the resulting HTML to the browser. We've seen that it does a great job to provide seamless front-end integrations, but there are a few things missing from our stack. Things like authentication, a database and storage are a must for all full-stack apps. Superbase provides all these services in a straightforward manner and in the next minutes we'll see how our Astro project can benefit from all these. I quickly defined the code required to work with the Superbase client under the services folder. You can check out the full implementation on the GitHub repo I'm linking in the description. In the pages folder we can now add a new Astro component to allow our users to log in. Astro uses a concept called file system routing which means that the components defined under pages will map actual requests based on a matching between the URL and the component name. 
A modern login form usually requires interactivity on the front end side since you need to capture things such as the input changes and the button clicks. This means that we need yet another island of interactivity, so we'll create a new solid component for that. It is true that you could perform logins with a simple form submission and no JavaScript involved, but we are going to use the Supabase most basic auth service, which relies on code running on the browser. In the login form.jsx, I'm fetching the user's email and sending that to the Supabase system. We'll do magic link based authentication, so no password is needed. We also have the chance to do a comparison between how Astro and Solid handle scope CSS. I'm creating a separate CSS module file for each solid component and its styling and then linking the class name to the styling rules. With all this in place, we should have the authentication flow completed. Clicking on the start button will trigger an event and an email will be sent with an authentication link you can click on. Once you're logged in, you should be able to change your profile details. We'll add the new profile Astro component under the pages and we'll follow the same steps we went through earlier. It's important to mention that most real-world apps will behave like this to some extent. The initial page will have some indexable static content on it, but then the user will expect some interaction. In our case, we are adding an interactive form that user can use to add their name, a short description, an avatar and a unique link for their public profile. This is pretty much a basic Stolid.js use case, where we are monitoring some internal state and performing some actions based on the user triggered events. We are going to mark this component as client only, since there is no benefit of rendering input fields on the server side as well. When the component is loaded, we are fetching the data in the browser directly from the Supabase database. In just a few seconds, we'll see that using the same service methods, we can retrieve data on the server side as well. While we are on the client versus server side rendering topic, I want to clarify a couple of things. Even if you are able to use SolidJS, React, Vue and other UI libraries inside Astro, this doesn't mean that these components need to be interactive. If no client directive is present when the component is defined, the code will be executed on the backend and the resulting HTML will be sent as a response. So, without the client attribute, SolidJS is just a simple replacement for Astro's default templating language. As I already mentioned, there are multiple options for client side interactivity. We looked at running things only on the client, but you could also go with options such as partially hydrating when the page is loaded or when a specific component is visible in the viewport. Getting back to our manage profile JSX file, besides saving and populating some user data, I also want to allow users to upload a picture of themselves. We'll store all the images in a super base bucket and the actual implementation is fairly simple. We'll just listen for an unchanged event on a file input and then send the bytes over using the super base API. In a second we'll see how we can retrieve this image on the server as well. Another quick thing I want to do first however is to also mention nested routing and to discuss a bit more about the multi-page app architecture. So you can have more complex routes in your app and you simply need to create an appropriate folder structure to mimic the request URL. In our case, we'll create a user folder and inside it, we'll add a file with a dynamic name. In the script part of our Astro component, which by the way is declared between something we call code fences, we'll work on some code that will run on the server and will compute plain HTML, which will be served back to the client. We can extract the link part from the Astro params and we'll use this value to fetch the appropriate profile from the database. All this code is running on the server and for each different profile, a link in the database, an independent page can be rendered. Compared with a single page app where a shell is sent to the browser and then everything is rendered on the client, Astro sends actual search engine indexable HTML as a response. This means that each page navigation will cause an entire browser page refresh and the round trip to the server and back is performed. Since at its core Astro is a static site generator, it expects to be able to create all the app pages at compile time, usually using its getStaticPath method. In our situation, the number of registered profiles is in constant change, so knowing all the options ahead of time is impossible. As a consequence, we need to switch to Astro's SSR capabilities in the Astro config file. While we are here, note that Solid is registered as an integration. This happened automatically when we added Solid as an integration to the project. And this pretty much sums it up. This was a high level overview of Astro and there are other topics such as data fetching or sharing state we didn't get a chance to look at here. However, the Astro team put in place a great documentation and I advise you to spend a little bit of time there. If you've made it this far, please consider liking this video and subscribing to the channel. Thank you for watching.